Today we're going to take a look at why it might not be the best idea to shoot in burst mode, or electronic shutter in some cases as well. This is something that I actually alluded to in a recent video that I did where I was comparing up compressed and uncompressed RAW and what the differences were. And in my research for that, I stumbled upon something on Sony's website that shows that actually the way cameras are saving RAW files varies depending on what mode you're shooting in. And, and I certainly had no idea about it up till that point. And since then, I've completely changed the way I use my camera. And judging by the comments of that particular video, there were quite a few other people who had no idea about it either. So given how potentially critical it could be for some people, I've decided to expand on it a little bit more and give it its own video. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, most cameras these days, when you shoot in RAW, it's advertised as shooting 14-bit RAW. Evidently not always the case. There is a page on Sony's website that I stumbled upon, which I will link in the description if you want to check it out, that shows that actually, in a lot of scenarios, you're not getting 14-bit RAW. Sometimes you're actually getting 12-bit, and you might not be aware of it. For example, the a7 III, the a7C, the a7R3, IV, the A variants, and the A9 II, all will give you 14-bit RAW if you're shooting single shot, uncompressed or compressed RAW, but if you switch into burst mode, you're still getting 14-bit RAW in uncompressed, but if you're in compressed RAW, you're only getting 12-bit. If you switch to bulb mode, where you can just dictate the, the length of the exposure, you're only in 12-bit. Presumably, even if you're shooting a shot in bulb mode that's less than 30 seconds, you still only get a 12-bit RAW file, regardless of whether you're in compressed or uncompressed RAW. And it's sort of worse for other cameras. The original A9, 14-bit, single shot, compressed or uncompressed in a mechanical or electronic, but if you're in continuous shooting, whether that is compressed, uncompressed, mechanical or electronic shutter, you're only at 12-bit. A7R2, A7S2, the original A7, all the A6000 series, the ZVE10, if you're shooting single shot mechanical, you get 14-bit, but if you're in uh, electronic shutter or burst mode, you're only at 12-bit. The A7 II, the A99 II, the RX1 R Mark II, 14-bit for mechanical, 12-bit for continuous. All of these are still 12-bit for bulb mode. And it's not just Sony, by the way. I mean, that, that was the one page of Sony's that I found, but having had a look online to see if I could find anything about other manufacturers, Canon, the R6 you get 14-bit RAWs if you're using mechanical shutter, but if you switch to electronic shutter, you're only then getting 12-bit. And the electronic is the only way of getting beyond 12 frames a second. If you want the 20 frames a second, you're at 12-bit RAWs. Now, for anyone wondering, the difference between 12 and 14-bit might not be actually a problem for a lot of people. From my testing for the aforementioned video about compressed and uncompressed RAW, if you're in good light then the difference between 12 and 14 bit is negligible unless you start trying to recover shadows. Once you start trying to pull back shadows, the 12 bit files fall apart a lot quicker than the 14 bit. You start getting a lot of noise in the shadow areas just because there's not as much information in the 12 bit rows as there is in the 14. So obviously it is gonna depend on the circumstances with which you are shooting, but it is certainly something to bear in mind. Since finding out about this, I've changed the way I use my camera. Beforehand, I would pretty much always have the camera in compressed RAW and in burst mode, because I was under the impression, from, from what I, I tested, the shadow recovery in compressed RAW was okay, but not as good as uncompressed RAW. Unbeknownst to me, what I now realize is that the reason the shadow recovery seemed worse in compressed RAW is actually because I was in burst mode, so I was only getting 12-bit RAWs, not 14. So what I now do is leave the camera in single shot and predominantly in compressed RAW and only switch it to burst mode when I actually need it. 
Obviously, I could leave the camera in burst mode and shoot everything in uncompressed RAW. That would still allow me to get the 14-bit RAW files, but then all the files are double the size, which takes up double the storage space. So it, it's trade-offs. Basically, it's just good to know exactly how your camera's working because it may affect how you decide to set it up for a given scenario. And incidentally, if you can't find out the information online about how your camera is working in terms of whether it's 12 or 14 bit, as a general rule of thumb from what I've seen, most of the cameras in single shot, in mechanical shutter, uncompressed RAW, if it has the option of uncompressed RAW, you, you're usually getting 14 bit RAWs. So if you take that as your benchmark, you can do a series of tests similar to how I did with the other video. Shoot a load of test shots with everything ridiculously underexposed and then try pulling the shadows back. So if you take single shot, uncompressed if the option's there, mechanical shutter as you benchmark as 14 bit, and then try the same shot but in burst mode, the same shot in compressed raw, the same shot on electronic shutter, and try recovering the shadows for all of them. If the shadow noise to your shot is similar to the reference shot, then the odds are you're still getting 14-bit. If not, and it, the, the shadow noise is a lot worse, then you're probably down at 12-bit for those particular settings. I don't have the information for all the cameras, but from what I've seen, there seems to be a lot of cameras out there that do seem to have these caveats as to you're only getting 14-bit files in certain scenarios and actually getting dropped to 12-bit in other ones, and you might not be aware of it. And like I say, for a lot of people, 12-bit might be absolutely fine, you might not care. But it's worth knowing whether you're then in 12-bit or 14-bit because you might find that in some scenarios, you change your settings because you specifically want 14-bit. So that is going to conclude this video. If you have any questions or queries, as always, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you found this video helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And then hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.